In this video, I'm going to go over recursion in C. So recursion is a way of solving a problem where our solution depends on solutions to smaller instances of the same problem. What this means as a practical matter is that we're going to write functions that are going to call themselves. And when they call themselves, they're going to pass in as an argument, smaller versions of the same problem. So a good example for recursion is the factorial operation. So the factorial of a positive number n, a positive integer n, is denoted by n exclamation mark. And it's defined as the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n. So n factorial would be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way to 1. 5 factorial would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 because it's 5 and all the numbers less than or equal to 5 that we're doing a product of. And so we end up with 120 in the case of 5 factorial. So this is a good problem for recursion to solve because you can see, even by looking at this, you can kind of see that there may be an opportunity here to use smaller instances of the same problem to solve the problem. First, let's solve it though using an iterative solution. We're gonna use what's called an iterative solution where we're gonna use variables and loops and operations in sort of the typical way that we might be familiar with already to solve the problem. So we'll say here int, n, so we have some variable to store the number. We'll say int factorial, and this is going to be where we're going to store the result. And then we're going to ask the user for the number n. So we'll say print f, and we're going to say enter a number. And we'll just ask them to enter a number. We'll read in that number, and then we're going to store it into n. And then what we're going to do is we're going to compute the factorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a loop, and I'm going to say while n is greater than or equal to one, run this loop. And we're gonna say that the factorial is equal to n times the current value of the factorial. And then we'll do n minus minus here to reduce n each time. And what we're doing here is we're carrying out this, this algorithm in an iterative way. So we're starting off with n and multiplying it by whatever the factorial currently is, which is going to be one. So n times one is just going to be n initially, right? Then we subtract one from n. The loop is going to run again until n is greater, is, until n is, you know, zero. But the loop is going to run again, and then we're going to do n minus one times whatever factorial is, which is n. And then the loop is going to run again. It'll be n minus two times whatever the factorial has been so far. And so we're, we're building up this, this result then, where with n times n minus one times n minus two until one. Once it's one, uh, that'll be the last time a multiplication takes place, and then the loop is going to is going to terminate, and then we're done. So we could then print out the result. So we could say like print f factorial is, and we could say fact there, and then we'll just compile this and give it a test. So this is like the iterative solution. This is the typical way of solving the problem. Oh, I forgot the f there with the print f. So this this is the typical way of solving the problem. So it says enter a number. We'll put in five. We get 120. Put in 10 we get a very large number. So the factorial explodes very quickly, but it looks like it's working correctly. So let's actually now solve this with a recursive solution. So we're gonna write a function that calls itself to solve this problem. And so what I'm gonna do actually is I'm actually just gonna comment out this for now. So I'm gonna put some comments here just to kind of, for now, get rid of this solution. And we'll call this like our, our iterative solution. And now let's write a recursive solution. So I'm going to make a function that's going to compute the factorial. So I'll call it int and I'll say factorial. It's going to take in a number and we might as well call it n. And it's going to return the factorial for the number n. So let's copy this down here and then we'll make our function definition. So our function definition is actually going to be kind of short here. What we're going to say is the factorial is going to be return factorial of n minus one, and we're gonna multiply n by factorial n minus one. So if you look at this here, return n times factorial n minus one. If you look at this, we've actually kind of got the structure of the factorial already. Because if you look at it, we've got like n times n minus one already, right? And then what's gonna happen when we call factorial n minus one? 
when we call factorial n minus 1, it's going to return n minus 1 times n minus 2, right? And that's exactly what we want. If you think about this function right here, if we were to call factorial n, like let's say we call it with, um, with 5. So we call factorial with 5. What it's going to do is it's going to return 5 times factorial of 5 minus 1, which is going to be, what, 4, right? So then this function here, what's it going to do? It's going to return 4 times factorial of n minus 1. So this function here is actually going to return, next, it's going to return 4 times factorial of 4 minus 1, which is going to be 3. And then when this function runs, what's factorial 3 going to be? Well, factorial 3 is going to be, you know, 5 times 4 times 3, because it's going to be 3 there, right, times factorial of 2. And then again, like we're going to keep going here, right? So this is going to be, uh, you know, now it's going to be 2 times factorial of 1. And you can see that we're, by this having this function call itself repeatedly, it's going to keep on returning like, you know, 5 times, okay, what's the next number? It's going to return 4 times, okay, what's the next number? 3 times. And it's going to actually build up the result so that the, the function will eventually return with the result. Now, the only problem is, is look at this here factorial 1. When we get down to 1, do we still want to re return factorial of n minus 1? Does that still make sense at that point? Because factorial of 1 would be what? Be 1 times factorial of 0. The way, we have the, the way we have it defined right now would be 1 times factorial of 0. And then what? Factorial of 0 is going to return, you know, 0 times factorial of uh, you know, I guess negative one at this point, right? This is starting to look bad now. We're going to multiply something by zero. This is this this we need to do something here, right? This this it doesn't make sense to keep on recursively calling the function at this point. This is where we want to stop because we only want to go until one. Once we reach one, we want to kind of stop doing recursion. We want to stop it. So this this point where we stop recursion, we call this a base case. We call that a base case, and that's where we want to stop using recursion. So what we're actually going to do here is we're going to say if n is equal to 1, we're going to return 1. And we're going to stop the recursion at that point. So this is our base case we're saying. We're saying if n is equal to 1, that's the point at which we're done. Just return 1. Don't actually return like the number and call the function again with the smaller number. Because at that point, we want to stop. And so we can give this function now a try. Let's just see how it works. So I'm going to now call the function instead. So instead of this iterative solution, we're going to have a recursive solution. And what the recursive solution is going to do is we're just going to say fact is equal to factorial. And we'll say uh, we, call it with, we call it with the number n. So we're going to call factorial with the number n, store the result into fact, and then we're going to print it out. Okay. So let's give this a shot now. And we'll just kind of, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll focus on this part of the code here just because that's the interesting part for what we're doing here. And what did I do? Oh, I forgot a semicolon. Forgot a semicolon. If you were watching this video the whole time, you're probably like, he forgot that semicolon. Uh, that's funny. All right, we'll clear this, uh, run this here, and enter a number. We'll say 5. We get 120. Enter number 10. We get the we get the right number again. Enter number 4. Again, the right number. So our our... Our solution here is working, and it's producing the same numbers as this iterative solution. And so we're happy with it. Now, the the kind of the, the advantage of recursion, really, is that it's expressing the problem, or at least one of the advantages of recursion, is that it's expressing the problem in a way that's very similar to the mathematics of the problem. So if you look at this here, like n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, if you look at our solution, there's a very clear relationship and mapping between our solution and the actual mathematical description of the problem we're solving. Whereas if you look at this solution here, it's a little bit less clear what the relationship is between this solution and this mathematical description of the problem. So recursion, using it as a tool to solve problems, it can often be sort of a more elegant, straightforward, easier to understand way of solving problems. Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes recursion can actually make things more confusing. 
And recursion can also have some performance issues as well because you've got a function that's calling itself. If you have a function that calls itself many, 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 many times, that can actually lead to issues uh, when, you're, when your computer essentially runs out of the ability to keep having the function call itself. It's actually possible to reach a limit where the, a function just can't call itself that many times without your computer basically essentially sort of running out of a partic particular kind of memory it needs to call these functions. So recursion isn't a cure-all for all problems, but for certain problems, especially related to things called data structures and algorithms, Recursions, recursion can actually be a great solution because it really expresses the problem in a way that's easier to comprehend. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.